Good morning. How are you, my man? Good, good. How you doing? I'm doing good. So uh, uh, Mo will be over at Hilarities, as I just mentioned. I, I said while you were in the bathroom, I said, you, you that definitely a setup. You don't even have to be, you could be like one one hundredth of a percent of being funny following it up with this guy just yelling at his ex-wife so uh yeah um that's that's all funny hilarious stuff <laughs> kids growing up in a hate-filled household <laughs> yes yes is i find it funny you know <laughs> i like to start out my day hearing that though because then i feel like i'm doing all right you didn't have it yeah. so bad no yeah. but not only that i feel like you know i've done a lot of bad things in my life but i haven't I haven't destroyed haven't any psyches. I haven't children, ruined any right. children yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I feel good about myself. You don't have any kids yourself, right? I uh, No, I don't uh, think so. Are, you're not married, right? I have a girlfriend. Uh, we live together, so we, you know, we got a dog. We're like in the we're in the process. I, seeing him complain about his divorce, I felt like I was like, oh, so that's me in five years. <laughs> <laughs> no, all, all these guys. I mean, how many people do you know that are married that are actually happy, Mom? Dude, it's getting married at this point. It's like being a lawyer. I don't know a single lawyer who likes their job, and I don't know a single person who's married who enjoys it and yet those seem to be two things that everyone i went to college with is trying to accomplish yeah they've they've done it right yeah Yeah. well uh what happened i was reading a little bit about mo mandel before he came in and and he he left you lived in california i think right and then you went over to london yeah uh, and that's, is that where you started comedy over in London? Yeah, I had a girlfriend uh, who was from the Bahamas who was going to school over there, and I and I followed her, and I lived in a dorm room after uh, after I graduated college. I lived with her in a dorm room for a year, and I started uh, you know doing stand-up over there. And so that was my question. What happened to this girlfriend? Uh, so you follow her. He gets, she he died. Gets, Next what? question? <laughs> no, uh, no she, I, I don't know. I follow, You know what it was? I followed her over there. We liked each other a lot, and then... The next step was I was going to move back to America, but we had to get married for her to be able to do that. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't like you that much. <laughs> That's yeah. a tough pill to swallow. It was just a hard... I mean, I, I think maybe we could have made it, but I don't know. I wasn't really ready to take that uh, that risk. Black chick? Was she from the Bahamas? Black so she girl, was yeah. a black chick. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And you're so uh, white, so pale. Well, you know, that's legal now. <laughs> um, I know this is uh, the Midwest, but, uh, you know, in many parts of the country, you can you can date intermix. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> so then you, uh, so you, you... No, I'll tell you this. Black girls love Jewish guys. That's yeah. like a dirty little secret in the black community community really yeah i, I had no they, idea that they that they, they don't like to admit it either but i mean percentage wise <laughs> when i was like really in the single world a lot of black girls i think full of shame would would hit on me you because know? i always thought you know if you go by stereotype that it's uh that it would be jews and koreans like uh you know the black girls are like jews a small or penis Co- thing jews no well no 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 just just you know uh, just what i've seen in movies of uh who they may not go what for. movies are you talking about where black girls aren't into jews and koreans that seems like the most ridiculous statement it's like some weird nazi hate-filled movie you made in your basement it is the midwest that's what we uh yeah watch yeah it. you know black girls right don't like jews or koreans we all know that <laughs> no, I I can't speak for Koreans. I mean, but uh, they they like Jews. So you you go over to London. You right. uh, start, and that's where you sort of started uh, trying comedy. Yeah, yeah. That's where I started doing like open mics and stuff. But I went over there. It was right when uh, America was bringing England into the Afghanistan war. So they just hated Americans. They like, couldn't stand you. They yeah. couldn't. Like I got booed off stage at the comedy store in London the minute they heard my accent. Yeah, and. Um, so, you know, it was kind of like learning to ski on, like, a triple black diamond. Yeah, no, it's trial by fire, yeah, I guess. Exactly. It's sort of, I mean, if you can get through that, it probably helps you out in the long run. Right, right, right. Now, did, 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 how long were you over there for? A year. All right. So I was I was going to ask if attitudes ever ended up changing about that, but you were only over there for a year. Probably not, really. No, no. I mean, you know, Europeans are, are funny. Like, they like to just hate on Americans. It's so much their thing to just trash, mm-hmm. you know, our, our whole country. And, like, when I'm in America, I'm not particularly patriotic and i'll pay attention to what's going on i'm like oh we're we're some bad we're doing some bad things but then for some reason when you're over there you're like we're great <laughs> what are you talking about we we, we saved the uh people in darfur you know you're you like get very defensive yeah it's weird it. it's like when it's like you know like i'll, I'll pretty much a self-hating person but if i get in an argument with my girlfriend suddenly i'm defending myself like a mother Teresa or something <laughs> like that you know so, so you you you're over there for a year you start doing the open mic yep. uh, stuff and then at that point do you think i can actually make a career out of this um yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I think I was, uh, I always kind of thought I could, even before I did it. I don't know mm-hmm. why. I just always had this sort of self delusional or whatever uh, conception of myself that I could, you know, do this. And then as soon as I started doing it, like, I don't know, it kind of, I think I picked it up pretty quick, you know, like I kind of, you know, I, I just fell in love with it. And, mm-hmm. and so I studied it and I was just like, you know, I was always a fan of comedy, but this, the, I did it like every night. For basically, you know, ten years. I've when you say that you study it, how did you? I just mean I would. Wa- I was such a fan of comedy. I would watch it constantly, and I would listen to it constantly. And you know, through osmosis, I guess you just sort of pick up. You pick up little things, you know. I mean, you comedy- just pick what you like. What you you see other people, and you go not jokes. Uh, um, I'm not saying, but but delivery and what you think is funny, what you think works, and meld it all together. Yeah, I mean. Y- don't you feel like, you know, as someone who's, you know, in a performing situation, like so much of what I think makes you good or bad is your own innate level of taste. You know what I mean? If you were to listen to a radio uh, person, even if they're popular, you know instinctively they suck, right, mm-hmm. in a certain thing. It's kind of the same thing with comedy, I think. And and based on what your innate level of taste is, that determines how great you're going to be because that's you have your own filter, mm-hmm. you know. So. I don't know. I guess uh, you know uh, you just sort of yeah. You look at not enough stuff in the beginning. You know you think everything's great. You know I as a kid I loved everybody from Jeff Foxworthy to you know Woody Allen to everything. All the you know I still love Woody Allen. But I mean like you know it, it, but as you get older you start getting more experience that you realize like oh it's some things you know are not you don't have as much respect for or whatever. So mm-hmm. I don't know. You just sort of. Yeah, I don't want to take it too seriously. So then you but. move, you move uh, back from London. You you get rid of the girl. You get rid of the black girl. You... Well, I don't like to think of it as the get rid of the black girl phase of my life. You know, that sounds a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, cut cut loose the black girl. And uh, no, I don't know. We still keep in touch. She's a very smart girl. She uh, she writes novels now. Oh yeah, yeah. You, uh, but your current girlfriend can't like that you stay in touch with uh, with the black girl, does she? she? She she doesn't like me to talk to any black people. Period. <laughs> you know? She's just a real racist, mean spirited girl. Yeah. You know? So you come back, and then, and then what do you do once you get back? Do you, you I, uh, move to L.A., or where do you No, go? no. Actually, I got in touch with a comedian who I really liked uh, on uh, MySpace at the time and asked him about how he got into it. I was that annoying guy that I get that email all the time. Right. And, and because I'm a terrible person, I don't even respond to it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I feel no, really bad he, about that, too. Like, uh, so many people will email me, and they go, you've inspired me to get into radio. You've, uh, you know, and it's like... I remember how much I idolized guys that were on the radio when I was right. a kid, and it would mean the world to me if they if they even acknowledged my existence. Now that I'm in the position, I go, man, I got a lot going on today. I don't know Too if busy. I can reply to this. Right? You you know, <laughs> yeah, you're like, listen, man, uh, your hopes and dreams are just so low down <laughs> on what I hope to get out of my day today. But I actually, I do, I, I don't often reply but i do at least give them i rationalize it by going well i thought of them and i wish them well and i really hope they it don't works know that out. i yeah, know they don't know, I mean, they it don't doesn't, know that it doesn't in help my at mind, all in my mind it helps me do oh, so you're like one of those people like uh did i donate to the uh cause no but i i said a prayer thought about it and you know i think jesus is really gonna help <laughs> right, those haitians right. because yeah. i'm not <laughs> no I, you know what who it is? did you reach out to on myspace arge barker but i'll tell you this is the thing with the people who reach out i've to never you. even heard of arge he's, he's a big he's a very funny guy yeah. yeah who's huge in australia he's actually a guy from san francisco and i had seen him you know growing up one time and uh but yeah he's a, he's a guy who wasn't popular here although he should be but you know what it is? If people reach out to you, like say, "Hey, how'd you get into comedy?" or "What, what do you do?" and you respond, ninety percent of the time it just gets weird, and they want more from you. And then they're like, oh, "I'm coming to L.A. in a week. Maybe we can meet up and talk about this in person." And then, and then here's my, you know, horrible demo. Listen to this. <laughs> and then, and then as soon as you stop responding, they get angry, yeah. and they're like, "It's like that uh, Eminem song, Stan, where that fan gets all pissed off. Like that kind of weird thing. They they just expect, <laughs> oh, he responded, so." We're best friends now, yeah. and he's my mentor. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, but what were we talking about? But Arge Barker oh, responded he, yeah. to you. So anyway, he said, and you then "Did go- it get weird? Did you?" Yeah. Like, then, hey, I, then I showed up at his house. Nate, I don't know the whole thing <laughs> in Australia. Yeah. So yeah. So no, he said you should go to San Francisco. That's like a great place to start out. And I grew up like four hours from San Francisco, so I was like, so I just moved there and started working at uh, a coffee shop at five a.m. So that from five a.m. to one p.m. So I could do open mics. You know, from six. PM to 10 PM. So I would just do right. open mics all night, get up, go to work, sleep, write jokes. I mean, and this is with a college degree with a 4.0 in creative studies. So I'm not like your exactly. parents must have absolutely <laughs> loved no, you. They, they did, man. <laughs> this is honestly, my parents are so unusual in this regard that I remember one time when I was thinking about quitting comedy, maybe like six years ago, my dad was like, 
honestly, I don't know what else you would be good at. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, thank you. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. It's, Went all through college. I, mean, I can't. I'm not prepared to do anything in the world. I was a creative writing major, so oh, well, honestly, he, he probably has a point. He probably then. has a point. I mean, it's <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because my girlfriend, she's does comedy and acting and stuff too. But I feel like innately, she is so intelligent that if it doesn't work out for her, you know, for her, she could go on to do anything. Mm-hmm. At this point, especially now, I'm 32. I've done nothing else for 10 years. Like, there's nothing I'm qualified to do. No, like right. it's terrifying right. sometimes when I think about it. Where I'm like, I don't even know how to do Excel or any I didn't know how to do the computer programs in 2002 when I was in college so like yeah. now there's probably some stuff out there that yeah. like I would just be useless I feel the same way about radio I mean I really would not be able to f- function in a normal job I wouldn't have I don't have any other the only thing we're really qualified to do outside of our job is just annoy people yeah that's pretty much <laughs> it yeah <laughs> if you do if you took the profession away from what people like us do it's just sort of be obnoxious now my uh, Dieter over here was convinced before you came in I think you were in the bathroom uh, and and I said uh, Mo Mandela is going to come in. I think this was during the commercial break, right? Yeah. And 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 you go, you go. I said I'm reading about him. I'm learning about him. Uh, my producer always gives me a packet. He goes, "We're just having him in because he's Howie Mandel's son." I go, I, "I don't, I don't think he's Howie Rob, Mandel's son." Rob, the producer, son. told me that's Howie's son. I go, "Oh, that's cool." So Rob told me that. <laughs> Why would you're not Howie Mandel's son? No, right? but so funny. So, a, I think it's funny that. That would be an automatic pass to get on the show anyway. Like, wow, he's Howie Mandel's son. We got to get him on air. I mean, you know, what are the uh, what are the odds we get a big celebrity like that in here? Uh, but that, you know what? I was actually at the Improv one night in L.A. and the uh, TMZ ran up to me and uh, they had the camera like, "Hey, Mo Mandel," and I was like, "All right, things are happening," you know. And the first question is, uh, "Are you related to Howie?" And I was like, "No," and they're like. All right, see ya. See you and they lower the camera like, what? that's it? That's all you get out of 10 years in comedy? And also, like, would that be the most exciting segment? We got Howie Mandel's unknown, and he said this. Stay tuned. What do you think of, uh, you live out in L.A. now? Yeah, what do yeah. you think of, uh, of, I love of these, it. No, these, like, paparazzi oh. who are running around? And, oh, and I see pathetic. Kanye West who's, you know, always fighting with them and yelling at him and that kind of stuff, but... Uh, you know, I think these guys are kind of scumbags. Really. Oh, absolutely. It's just the lowest common denominator. It's just so disgusting. You know, you see these just animals out on the street, like blocking traffic, trying to get a picture of yeah. somebody. It's just, they really are just like jackals. You know, it's weird. I, I don't know how you wake up every day and you're like, oh, God, please let me get a picture of somebody who had a career that I'll never have. <laughs> it's just really But don't bad. you think that some of these people, uh, first that of all. That said, I hope one day they follow me around. Well, well, like Kanye West, he yells at them. I go, if you, that's just that just encourages them to keep following you around because they can sell that video to TMZ or or whoever. Uh, it just it doesn't I think it's make funny that sense. Kanye West. I mean, he yeah, a guy like that who seeks out being in the spotlight constantly and is then annoyed about it, and the girl he's dating is only a celebrity because she made a sex tape. It's like, you know, people try to use the media, yeah. and then obviously they get angry at it at the same time. Well, I think a lot of people go and they try to get on this, you know, they go they go to these restaurants where the paparazzi, I, I just, I'm not an expert on this, but I have a feeling if you wanted to avoid it, it would be possible to avoid it. I've been able to do it for 32 years. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years in show business, I, I'm so good at avoiding the paparazzi in any really major national attention. I'm like an a ninja at it <laughs> you uh i could take i should teach classes you um you're on chelsea lately a lot do a lot of chelsea yeah done how'd gr- you how did you end up uh did, did, they, did you just know her you just you gotta give her the to... best sex she's ever had <laughs> you have to give her six books worth of just something throbbing tells me giving her the best Korean sex is... jewish yes. peony that's something basically tells what me it is giving her her best might be a a tough proposition uh, the, 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 there right. might have been a lot of well, guys if i could have... see looking at you just now i could see how a man like yourself would think that <laughs> It, well, yes. Coming from me, a virile, a virile beast of the night, <laughs> I uh, can't relate to that kind of uh, self doubt. No, uh, what it was, they saw me at uh, the, the improv, and uh, and they like, is that guy Howie Mandel's cousin? Let's get him on the show. No, <laughs> no they said they, uh, they, you know, they said, hey, you're funny, you want to come on? And then you know, I've done it over forty times now, so it's been nice. You know, they kind of bring you back. They and pay you anything for that, or you do you get it like four hundred bucks? Oh, okay, so it's not much. It's but not it's, much. It's, but it's funny, people who aren't 
in show business, I remember a friend of mine asked me, he goes, how much you get for them? I'm like, ah, 10 grand. He's like, oh, that's not bad. Because <laughs> you know, like when, you, when you're when you not in show business, everyone you see on TV you think is like making millions right. of dollars. Right. Like that's how, I mean, that's how I was growing up. I'd see someone at Comedy Central Premium Blend, I'm like, oh, that guy's famous now. Right. That's how that works. Right. You know, and then you realize. But it, it pays off for you, I guess, for Yeah, you sell a lot of tickets. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people. And... Yeah, and I got a, uh, one time I, uh, I was on a train in New Jersey. Um, and I'm not bragging, but I uh, was there. And the guy who took the tickets recognized me, and he goes, "Oh, you're Mo Mandel from Chelsea Lately, yeah, yeah." And he gave me his phone number. He goes, "Anytime you need to take a train <laughs> in the no- Eastern Seaboard again, you call me." I've been back there like five times. I call this guy George, and he's like, "All right, where are you, Penn Station?" Go to the eight track. <laughs> Murray's coming out. He'll walk you on. And this has he's freaking awesome. This is you know? great. This yeah, is, it's, this... it's I got this like really low level celebrity hookup. <laughs> uh, so do they when you go and you do the show? Yeah. Uh, do they? Uh, how does it work? Do they give you an outline of what you're going to be talking? They give about you like or... a, yeah. They shoot you an email about an hour before you're on Chelsea, and they're like, uh, all right, so you're going to talk about Bruno Mars. Uh, you know, said the N word in a bathroom, or I don't know what. I don't think that's a topic. I don't want to get sued. I don't think he did that. But I mean, you know, they'll say something stupid like that, yeah. and then you have to like, you know, I don't know anything about celebrities, so they don't have to go Google who these people are, and then figure out a way to say something horrible about them all within an hour. Because yeah. that's kind of my take on it. Yeah. So you just so you write a couple of uh, one liners for each little topic that they provide. Right. You right. And, and then you have to fight to get in because there's no like, oh, now we go to you, we go to Lonnie Love, we go to you know, Natasha Leggero. No, it's like you have to fight to get in, and Chelsea. At this point, I feel like it's kind of just half the time, just sort of bored of doing it. So she'll be like, "I don't want to talk about that." Anyone see that movie? You know, and so then you're like, "Oh, now I gotta." You don't you have know. anything for yeah, that movie. Yeah, so you got to figure out, you know, what to say. Or she'll yeah. talk about a party she was at with Obama, and you're like, oh, "I wasn't invited to that." So <laughs> then you have to like. Well, you know, do get you in there. do you prefer that sort of winging it, where you can come up with stuff off the cuff, or? Do you prefer knowing in advance so you can plan it out? I mean, I I like winging it, but at the same time, if I got a topic and I wrote for an hour and I thought I came up with a real gem, it's annoying to be like, I was talking about Obama. How do I segue back to what Britney Spears did to put this real sweet zinger out there, you know? Right. And then you try to use it in your act for a week, and everyone's like, why are you talking about celebrities? Uh, Mo Mandel is here uh, in the studio with us. He's going to be at Hilarities tonight and all this weekend. Um I also I don't know whatever happened with it, but but I I saw that last year you were working on a television show. I don't know if it got sold or picked up or anything. You had written a television show. Oh, um, well I've done I've done a bunch of uh, I was on a sitcom on NBC. I was one of the stars of it with Hank Azaria and uh, Catherine Hahn. Uh-huh. It was about a year, two years ago now. And what was we, that called? It was called Free Agents. Uh-huh. Came on the same year Whitney did, and uh, it only lasted four episodes. So that was like. Does that kind of suck? Oh, like, it, it majorly sucks. Because you're on, like, you have an actual television show. You're on NBC. I'll tell probably- you how much it sucks. We got picked up for 13 episodes. I was making 35 grand an episode. Oh wow! wow. Yeah, so it was like real, <laughs> real money. You know, so I do the math: 35 grand times, you know, 13. That's like I don't know. At the time, I knew it was like 400 thousand dollars. Right. So you think, all right, I'm going to get 400 thousand dollars for literally like four months' work. Right. You know, not bad. Not Howie Mandel's son money, but decent money. (laughs) So then, when the show gets canceled after eight episodes, you don't shoot the other 13 that they picked up. And they don't pay you. No, (laughs) and they don't pay you. And it's funny, because I was talking to Al Madrigal, who's a comedian, he's on The Daily Show now, and he didn't realize that. We were on the show, and he goes, no, my contract was, was they gotta pay me everything. And I remember talking to him two months later, he's like, yeah, man. I already put in like a new deck at my house. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I mean, you got to save your dough because, well, I mean, you know. Sure, right. You never get... know what's when, what's right. going to end. Right, and, right. And, and it also probably sucks. Like, you know, you have something to come in. They probably, uh, on those shows, they probably, you know, they you're treated like a king probably right, when you like come into king. work. You have yeah. a little parking space. Yeah. They have a whole setup with food and your oh. dressing room and all that. Dude, you're like, this is the life. when you're like one of the stars of a show, it's unbelievable, yeah. you know? And so I was, uh, you know, I was one of the stars of the show for like two months in time where we were shooting it. And then the show got canceled. Then a month later, I booked a, a pretty cool guest star on this show called Happy Endings that was on ABC. And I was playing opposite Casey Wilson. And just, just the... The way they treat you when you're like a weekly, you just have like a one week, you mm-hmm. know, one one week part compared to being when you're a regular is like 
so depressing. Night and you know, day, yeah, because yeah, you go from them like, here's your parking spot, to them be like, yeah, this uh, 19 year old intern is going to pick you up on a golf cart at your <laughs> uh, thing, and you're going to go by there, and no one's going to talk to you till it's time for your line. The director is going to be kind of a jerk, and all the coverage is going to be on the other actor because no one really cares about your line. You're just like, oh, what happened? I was one of you. I was part of the sunlight on this planet. And they're like, get back in the darkness. You know. But uh, what I've been doing lately is I've, I've had a lot of success with writing lately, which has been awesome. Last year I sold a show to Fox that never got shot, but we, you know, we did the you know whole thing development. And now I got two shows in development, um, one with uh, FXX, you know FX, mm-hmm. you know they, they, that's this channel with oh, Louis and uh, Always Sunny Now, which I'm really stoked about. And oddly enough, one with the Disney Channel, oh, wow. which is bizarre because they read a script I wrote for NBC and. Uh, they call, which was very adult, and they called me and they're like, uh, you know, we'd like you. Have you ever thought about writing? Do you want to write for the Disney Channel? I was like, no, <laughs> and not at all. And they were like, we'll pay you this much. I'm like, I'd like to write for the Disney Channel. I like Disney. I like Goofy. I like everything you guys do. I'll wear a Mickey Mouse hat when I come in. I'm a big fan of happy white uh, waspy family <laughs> stuff. And uh, anyway, so they uh, they you know they they we talked about it, and you know I had like an idea, and they they bought it, and so now I'm writing that. But the funny thing is, like, I have no, I don't watch children's shows, so I'm having to watch all these kid shows which is very hard to do in a non seeming like a huge pedophile way. Right. <laughs> you know, I've been in the gym in my building and I'm working out and I'm like, yeah, we just put on the Disney channel and people walk in like, what the hell is wrong with you? Why are you watching Austin and Allie, you pervert? And I'm like, no, I got a script deal. No, come back here. <laughs> do you do you have any issues? So you, you were on that NBC show. You said that you were the star. Now you're doing a lot of writing, selling yeah. uh, shows and things like that. But do you actually want to to be in front of the camera? To be yeah, I want to be in front of the camera. Ultimately, yeah. I mean, the show I'm writing for FX um, is a, a show very much based on when I was a kid. I was a kid who I was such a my dad's a psychiatrist, and I was such a disaster of a kid that he started losing clients <laughs> because I was just notoriously this kid who was you know pulling out his genitals at school and lighting fires and just a mess that people were like go to my dad like there's no way you know how what to you're fix doing. my kid right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you don't know anything <laughs> clearly and uh, I was actually paranoid for years that my dad was uh, purposely drugging me. Because he wanted to put me on Riddlin for for a while, and I refused to do it. So I was like, I wonder if he's like finding a way to get that in me, yeah. you know, to try to save his business or whatever. So that's kind of like the conception of the show: this father who's desperate to save his messed up kid, and uh, I'm I'm writing myself in there as like his side character, who's kind of a sleazy doctor runs yeah. a dialysis clinic next. I just door. think it would be hard to be a writer. I, I I've, I've never understood. Maybe it's just because of my personality, and I I don't say that I always have to be the center of attention or anything, but it would be hard for me to write something and 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 the people who write it are actually really the true talent behind it and then some guy goes out performs it and he gets all of the credit he gets all the hot babes he gets all the money that would be that would be tough to swallow yeah 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 no i could see that i find it very gratifying writing like just for itself like i've always enjoyed that you know i've written like a novel or whatever you know stuff like that i just i like the experience of it but i do think especially people who write jokes for other comedians who i know mm-hmm. that must be just unbelievable yeah because someone goes on the tonight show and they do their little talking segment and they're like god that so-and-so was so funny and they're like he got that <laughs> yesterday i saw my friend writing that <laughs> and i mean that's so common it's unbelievable yeah. people are like so-and-so's got the new hour special coming out so i got a writing job for two months we're all in a room together it's like wow yeah it's disgusting i mean it's not disgusting i mean maybe you know the, the demand is so high mm. when you get to be like one of these people who are so famous people want you to come up with a new hour every you know eight months or whatever no one can do that like that's just not how comedy works that's why you see comedians you know doing the same jokes and building and building and building it just takes a really long time mm. maybe three guys who can you know figure out how to be that prolific uh, Mo Mandel is going to be over at Hilarities tonight, 7.30 and 10 o'clock. Saturday, uh, 7 and 9.30. And Sunday at 7 o'clock. I'll give you the number to purchase tickets here in just a second. His uh, website is momandel.com. Dom, do I have tickets to give away to one of his shows? We'll give some tickets away. <clears throat> we right. also have Allie Wong on the show. She's also from Chelsea lately. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she's real funny, really Allie dirty. Allie Wong. Really uh, dirty, funny. What is this, Korean? Uh, I, I think Chinese, she's Vietnamese. Vietnamese? Yeah. She's Korean, so, you know, black girls don't like her. But everybody else <laughs> will love her. <laughs> um, call her 30. I'll give you tickets to go see Mo and Allie. Uh, 1-866-YO-ROVER. That's 1-866-967-6837. 
Uh, Hilarities is over there on East 4th Street downtown. Nice place. I don't know if you've been there before, but it's yeah, really Yeah, it's nice. gorgeous, man. Yeah. It is gorgeous. Let me tell you, I did the other club last time I was here, yeah. and one show I started out, uh, this was in 2010, I was like, uh, so I'm Jewish. Someone in the front row went, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, all right, it's that kind of place. Disappointed. <laughs> she was it? like, I thought we got them all. No one, <laughs> what is going on here? You know, so, so far, uh, there's been no outright anti Semitism. It's been a really yet, good week. Yet, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the week is early. The week is early. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll work. We'll build. Do you find that there are people? I mean, you're in LA. No one's anti Jew in LA other than Mel Gibson. LA, there's so many Jews, you almost think the Holocaust really did get made up. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you don't run into people that just. Uh, oh, hate. around the country, you do all the do time. Do you really? Oh my God! Really? Yeah, yeah it's weird. Why? Dude, what do they hate Jews for? Being. I mean, you know, know we killed Jesus. There's yeah. things we did in the past. People aren't thrilled about. But uh, I don't not like hate Jews. But there's just like weirdness about it. You know what it is? Everyone who's not of a certain thing wants to talk about that thing. Hmm. You know, and people come up to me and they'd be like, you know, oh, I got a friend. Uh, he's Jew. Is that what you say? He's Jew, or I don't know. He uh, he doesn't spend a lot of money, though. You know, <laughs> I'm joking. No, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. You know what I mean? Like, all right, uh, cool. So you want to get all right? You know what? I I actually I thought I was a racist for a while though, because I do that too. Like, if I'm hanging around a black friend, I'll be like, you know, I'll find a way to segue it into like. Is Jay Z a good father? You think? Or you know, I'll say something. Or if I'm talking to like a Mexican friend, or like neck tattoos or whatever. But like, but then I was talking to a fat friend of mine the other day, and I started like, I found myself being like, Hey, do you know if uh, does Olive Garden still do that bread thing? Where they, can't? I was like, Oh, I'm not a racist. I'm just an idiot. I can handle that. Um, uh, caller thirty one eight six six Yo Rover. Uh, two pairs, so. All right, two pairs, and caller 31. And if you don't win tickets, I'll, I'll give you the number to purchase tickets. 216-241-7425. That's 216-241-7425. Mo, I appreciate you coming in, my man. Uh, even though uh, we find out that he's not uh, Howie's. I mean, this right must on. be a what huge a dis- disappointment for you guys. What a disappointment. <laughs> you know, the 4,000 people. Fathering questions. The people just gathered outside this studio like it's TRL <laughs> in, in 2003 are just bummed. <laughs> uh, uh, go see Mo at Hilarities this weekend. I do have to take a uh, quick break. Mo, thank you for coming in, Thanks my for man. Me, man. We'll be right back on Rover's Morning Glory. Hang on. 